Good evening, Shabbos, everyone. This week's parsha is that of Tzav. In parsha Tzav, we have many of the laws regarding the sacrifices, <clears throat> and it speaks about the korban chatas, the sin offering. <clears throat> And it tells us that the sin offering, there are portions of the meat that are permissible to be eaten by the kahanim. But the, those sacrifices in which the meat is permissible to be eaten, it has to be consumed within a certain frame of time. After that frame of time, it is prohibited to be consumed and it must be burned. It's not kosher. Well, what happens if during the permissible time they took the meat and they cooked it in a pot? So the pot has absorbed from the flavor of this sacrificial meat. And after the time limit, the flavor should be not kosher. The pot's not kosher. So indeed, the Torah tells us that if it is an earthenware vessel, which has absorbed the flavor, the flavor cannot be, you can't kosher it. You have to break the vessel. If it's a vessel made of metal, copper, then indeed you can kosher it. And how do you kosher it? The same way it was used to absorb the flavor. If you cooked it in, you'll cook it out. These are the laws of how and we deal with the flavor that is the residue remaining after it has been prepared. <clears throat> Rashi notes that this law is not unique to the meat from a sin offering. It's true of any offering in which the meat can be consumed. There's a carbon shlomim, a peace offering, in which there are portions that are consumed by the Kohen and there are portions that are consumed by the Israelite who brought it. And the same laws apply, that during the frame of time in which it's permissible, it can be eaten, and once we've reached that limit, it has to be destroyed, it's prohibited. And what do we do with the vessels that we use in preparation? If it can be kashered, a vessel made of metal, we kosher it. If it can't be kashered, it's made of earthenware because when earthenware absorbs, we cannot purge it, we can't get that flavor out, it has to be broken. So the question is, why then did the Torah choose to present this law in regard to the sin offering. If it's true of any of the offerings that, have, that can be consumed, why did the Torah choose the sin offering to be the model to teach us this law? And this law, by the way, is relevant in the laws of Kashris. If somebody has a vessel made of metal and it absorbs something which isn't kosher, or let's say a fleshic pot was used with dairy, with milchiks, so now we have to kosher it. So if it's made of metal, we can kosher it. If it's made of earthenware, we can't kosher it. So this law is relevant to us also. Why is it presented by the sin offering? The Kleyokar explains and says, that by presenting this law, by the sin offering, the Torah is teaching us something in addition. And that is, a human being is similar to the vessel that has absorbed this flavor, which is prohibited. And that a human being, just like a vessel, if it absorbs something prohibited, it's got to be kosher. A human being also. We are vessels, and if we have transgressed, then we, our neshamas, our souls, have absorbed this flavor of transgression, this stench, and it has become part of us, and we need to kosher ourselves. How do we do that? So it tells us <clears throat> that the righteous, they're like vessels which are made of metal. They can be kashered easily. You boil up water and you kosher it. You boil, put water in the vessel up to the top and you bring it to a boil and it kashers. The same with the righteous. The righteous, the minute that they sin, they immediately feel regret in their hearts. 
and they immediately recognize what they did was wrong and they resolve not to do it again. And this feeling of regret and this of which they act upon themselves, they resolve not to repeat such behavior. This is the method of kashering. That's how they kasher and purge themselves from the element of transgression that was absorbed in their souls. That's for the righteous. But what about for us? What about the rest of us, ordinary Jews? We are like the earthenware vessel. How can we be kashered? If we've transgressed, it's so hard to remove the flavor, the taste of that transgression from our souls. If we've spoken Lush and Hara, yeah, maybe we feel a little bad, but you know what? We rationalize and there must be a, some, some heter, it must be permissible or whatever. And, and, and others are speaking, will come up with all types of excuses. And not only that, after we've done something once or twice or three times, it doesn't even phase us. We're not even impacted by what we've done. As far as we're concerned, yeah, this is okay. This is normal behavior. Everyone does it. It's become part of us. How can we kosher ourselves? We're like an earthenware vessel. We can't get it out. The Torah says we have to break the vessel. What does that mean? We break the, we don't have to shatter it, break it. We have to break ourselves. Break ourselves? What does that mean? <clears throat> it means we have to look within ourselves with truth and honesty. And we must recognize and say that I am rooted in a foundation which is faulty and flawed. And if this has become the pattern of my behavior, I have to rethink, I have to examine the values of the society in which I am found. I have to look at my environment which might present certain standards of morality which are in conflict with the Torah. I have to examine deeply within myself and my thought process and my values and my foundation, and I have to break away. We don't break ourselves. We have to break away. We must recognize that just because it's done by others, and this is the, the behavior pattern that we find within society, is no reason for us to follow that path. We have to look and say, first and foremost, would I want someone doing to me what I just did? Would I want someone speaking about me? We must invoke what the Talmud says, what Hillel said, what you find to be distasteful, don't do unto others. Don't do that. Don't speak about a person. You wouldn't want someone speaking about you. You don't want somebody treating your children the way we're treating that other people. That is the mode. That's the standard. That's the element of ethical behavior that the Torah presents to us. And we must put aside and close our eyes and close our ears to all of the foolishness and the insanity that is, that is presented by our culture in which we find ourselves that is determined to justify the most horrific behavior, the most immoral, depraved behavior. That is not the Jewish way. So we must look well within ourselves and break the pattern and stop it and say, I am better than this. I am capable of so much more. I am a descendant of Avraham and Sarah. My soul stood at Sinai and said, Naaseh and Ishma, God, I accept your Torah. I am the one that God has chosen for this unique mission. I will not allow myself to be led by those who are presenting elements that are foreign and considered repulsive in the eyes of the Torah. We have to break it. And we break it, and that's the koshering process. That's how we kosher ourselves. That's how we kosher our souls. And this is why the Torah presents this law by the sin offering, to tell us that even when we are sinful, 
it is still possible for us to kasha, purge the elements that distract us and return unto our Father in heaven. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay Jewish. Have a wonderful Shabbat.